Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is cognitive dissonance theory? Now, oftentimes in counseling and mental health treatment, we hear about this concept of cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance theory was developed by a researcher named Leon Festinger in the 1950s. And what this theory says essentially is that there is a discomfort, anxiety, tension, pressure, when someone's beliefs are different from their actions. Now, with that word beliefs, we could also add attitudes, cognitions, and with actions, of course, we could call that behavior. But that's the general idea behind the theory. And also with this theory, there's this idea that individuals with cognitive dissonance, individuals experiencing this tension, are going to work toward resolving that tension. So there's something driving them. Individuals are sensitive to believing one thing that's different from what they're doing. Now, a lot of times we hear examples of cognitive dissonance in terms of activities that aren't good for people. So somebody's engaging in some sort of destructive behavior, but they believe that individuals shouldn't be, that would be a major cause of distance. This idea that individuals are sensitive to cognitive dissonance is called the principle of cognitive consistency. So whenever we don't have congruence, there is something that drives us to find it, something that drives us to get rid of the dissonance. Now, the degree to which someone feels cognitive dissonance is dependent on many factors as well. Usually, we think of the main factors as how large the difference is between the value and the behavior and how deeply held the value is. So if there is a large discrepancy between what somebody's doing and how they value that activity, and they really deeply believe in that value, we would expect to see the highest level of distance. Now when it comes to resolving cognitive distance, there are three ways that can happen in the theory. I think of it a little bit differently so, according to the theory, someone would change their belief, change the action, or change the way they perceive the action. I view the perceptual difference, changing how someone perceives the action, as really just another version of changing the belief. So I would divide it up in terms of a way to resolve distance, or you could think of it as what happens when there's cognitive distance, is that somebody's going to first change the action. So let's use the example of smoking. Someone doesn't believe that smoking is healthy, so the value is that they shouldn't smoke. They are smoking, so they stop smoking. That's changing the action, and that resolves the distance. Then changing the belief. So say someone is cheating, like an extramarital affair, and they don't want to stop that action, so they change the belief. They start viewing infidelity instead of as being wrong, as being okay. And that resolves the distance. Now, if we use the same example, we could look at how someone changes the perception of the action. So they could look at, in this example, the infidelity, they could look at their infidelity and say that what they're doing specifically is actually not wrong. Other infidelity may be wrong, so in a way they're still holding on to the original belief, but not exactly, really both are changing but they're looking at the action differently. They could say it's really common or the type of affair they're having really isn't the same type of affair as other people have. So they can distort how they see the action. They can rationalize. So again, I see this behavior is really just another version of changing the belief. Another category I would put in there is that an individual can change both the belief and the action. So, for example, say that someone goes to work and they're always short with a particular colleague. Maybe they find this colleague annoying. But they don't believe that someone should be short or cold or distant or mean to another individual. But at the same time, they really have trouble getting along with this person. So maybe they adjust their belief a little and say, well, it's okay to be short once in a while when it's called for. And they change the behavior. So instead of being short every day, they might be short a few times a week. So they can adjust both to relieve the distance. 
The last resolution to cognitive dissonance that I would add in, and that I've seen many times as a mental health counselor, is that the belief and the action don't change, but rather how a person views themselves can change. And this really isn't exactly a resolution to cognitive dissonance. This is more of accepting that discomfort, pressure, tension, and anxiety. So going back to that infidelity example, someone could believe that what they're doing is infidelity. They could believe it's wrong and they could hold on to that value very strongly. And they could just look at themselves and say that they must be a bad person. So their self-esteem would be lowered. That's not what we typically think of in terms of a resolution to cognitive dissonance. It's more of just experiencing the dissonance, but that can happen too. It would be incorrect to believe that all cognitive dissonance results in change. It doesn't. Sometimes individuals just stay with those uncomfortable feelings. They deal with the cognitive dissonance. They cope with it. And of course, we believe that there are mental health consequences for that, meaning there are mental health symptoms associated with sitting with that dissonance for a long period of time, particularly if it's a great amount of discomfort or anxiety. Cognitive dissonance is actually a fairly common issue or situation that mental health counselors deal with in therapeutic sessions. It's not unusual for someone to come into counseling and mention a set of circumstances and discomfort, and really what they're talking about is that their actions don't match their values, and this is leading to tension and discomfort. So it's an interesting theory, and it applies in the real world in terms of mental health treatment. I hope you found this description of cognitive dissonance theory to be interesting. Thanks for watching.